So design is a very general word and people sometimes have the misconception that branding is very easy. So mm. what are the key things that an entrepreneur should pay more attention to when it comes to design? Products, logos, website, or marketing materials? Well, I would say, yes, design is a, is a word that uh, is sort of underappreciated, <laughs> overused. Um, design is actually not that easy. It is an art and an, as well as in size, especially a science, especially when it comes to branding, because when you design something for a particular brand, you're shaping that brand, you need to think about their audience and how do you capture the hearts of those audiences. It's not just um, painting a pretty picture and making something pretty. It really has to speak with that audience. So. So what's really important is uh, everything has to come together to build that experience, to build that consistency in that voice that is delivered to the audience, whether it's the logo or the colors or the products or the website, um, marketing materials, whether they are posters, um, brochures or social media, uh, IG icons or layout, uh, as well as more important, um, verbal branding is also very important how you write your copy you know that's important and as something that's a physical for example if you have a hotel or a restaurant the experiential design is especially important it's like down to how you greet your customers how your waitress or your staff present themselves how they speak how they uh, serve the client the customers. These are very important touch points that um, we will categorize under design. So everything has to be thoroughly thought through and not uh, something that is frivolous and uh, like a flick of a wand and everything can be done in a click of a button that, that's not true, which many people has a, have a misconception of. So uh, it's a very measured and uh, heavily researched um, process to get to where a brand could be. Mm -mm -mm. So a lot of times when people engage branding, they often have a reality check about the budget. Mm. So how much percentage or amount of budget uh, should a business allocate for design? Well, this is a very uh, real question. And I, I, I'm very glad that that's being asked because um, many, many times um, I, I don't want to offend anyone, but sometimes I have prospective clients who come through the door and they would say that they have a huge budget and they want to do like a huge list of mm. things that they want to accomplish. And um, after we've talked through all these um, complexities and, and, and ambitions that they want to build, uh, they only have like a few thousand dollars to spare. And that was um, a little bit heartbreaking because... Uh, I feel like A, they maybe have not done their homework, B, they are not aware of what um, the value of design is, and that is really important. And C, um, it's very hard to, for us to serve them because as a branding and design company, um, there is a certain value that we, um, we charge. And, mm -hmm. and also we are a business that <laughs> there is a bottom line as well. So uh, for any business uh, that has that is, uh, ha has an interest in, in, in um, doing a, a, a good branding, they should, I think, at least have uh, 30 to maybe 80K in a, as a US dollars for um, a branding project, um, mm -hmm. which will include something like a logo, um, a, a simple sort of brand strategy of positioning, mm -hmm. and a uh, complete uh, web, uh, I guess brand identity system where they could apply colors and typography mm. to uh, maybe their social media, their website, and yeah, some kind of a guide for them. Um, I think that is really um, what we can do for them. And I, I think, of course, the more touch points they could uh, let us, uh, let the design agency or brand agency work on, the better it is for them to be able to reach out to their audience in a more consistent way uh, that they don't leave anything out. But that could be, of course, done in phases, you know, with the budget that you can allocate every quarter or every annually. 
So mm -hmm. I would say one needs to be realistic about uh, allocating um, a good size budget. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. even today, as we speak, uh, a website um, is affordable, but uh, it should not be something that is um, a few hundred dollars. That would be ridiculous. Um, you know, uh, you want somebody who is professional to work on it, somebody who know what they're doing to work on it and not some intern or student who has no experience about it. I mean, you're literally putting your business in the hands of someone and you need to trust that someone. Mm. So I think from the get-go, it's very important to, I mean, I'm kind of answering your question a little bit more. Uh, you need to kind of do your homework in you know, sussing out who are the best designers in your city or even outside your city is fine too because uh, we do work with people outside uh, Singapore. So find the best, find the ones that you like, you can trust and have a chat with them. You know, you can chat with a few, mm -hmm. get as much knowledge as you can as, you know, it is for your business. You want the best for your business. And once you engage and decide on one uh, particular studio or agency, um, trust them, you know, uh, let them lead the way for design. You know, it's, it's very often that the best branding and design happens if the client trusts their designers and that goes a long way. So I uh, definitely encourage that. Of course, it has to be with your input of your, your vision and all. Um, it has to make sense with your business and all. So it really starts from picking the right agency, the you know, the best one, the, you know, so do your research before going in, yeah, and have a good budget. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. So as a sculptor, I often encounter this uh, budget issue with my clients as well. But some entrepreneurs really have very tight budgets. So right. how can they do it themselves? And and what ways could the entrepreneur start working on the branding? Any very first step you suggest them to start on? I guess um, it's it's a tricky it's a tricky question um mm. i mean i mean nike paid someone 35 dollars for a swish right and look at nike to get today um yeah i guess it could be done but i think that needs to be managed very very carefully um i mean uh you need to obviously do your homework you need to study uh you need to know what your brand stands for and who your audience are and uh, for sure, you need to have a very clear sort of direction in which how visually uh, it would see. I mean, some people are quite visually and, and, and business driven that way they, they could do it. And maybe start, start out with something really simple, like a simple logo and a simple sort of brand. Mm -hmm. And then after a year or two, when you have enough cash, I would still encourage you to get someone um, uh, great professional to help you sort of like do a uh, upgrade of your brand and mm -hmm. then you can do it in phases it doesn't mean that you need to have everything at one go if you cannot afford it but definitely still do that one step by engaging the right designer you don't you know you don't have to do that full shebang of like a crazy website you know no you don't have to but at least get a good sort of um, identity system going uh, with mm -hmm. someone that is professional I think that's still important yeah yeah. So earlier you mentioned the importance of visual language, of capturing the hearts. So what are the main elements you think a good design should contain in order to be able to express his brand's values very clearly? And what should be avoided? Well, uh, I guess um, design is quite subjective as well. But so very for us, it, it, at our studio, um, we are very clear when we, are, when we approach a project that this, whatever that we're trying to soft or trying to build is really for the audience of that brand not for mm -hmm. the owners you know it could shouldn't be the owners it should be the audience um you know if you're targeting um, a, a baby sort of market then you have to make sure that the visual has to um, speak and express in that way you know the colors has to the color system that you uh, build has to express for that market you know obviously if if you yeah, baby market and use something that is uh, a bit dull then maybe it doesn't work for that mm -hmm. so i think it's it's a bit of a common sense as well so colors are important um, fonts of course are important um, 
but if you have the right um, designer, they'll be able to point you to the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, as well as visual, I mean, obviously, if you're designing a baby product, then you need to make sure that it's something gentle, something like friendly, and, you know, it conveys something that is peaceful and maybe playful. Mm -hmm. So there are different ways of approaching it, but it shouldn't look like it's a heavy metal brand, you know, or it shouldn't be... It shouldn't look grungy or you know i think i think that these are different um visuals that will give direct, um immediately an impression about the brand as soon as a person see it so um i think it's would be useful if you are able to put together like a mood board as well mm. yeah i mean you can do it on your own it's not super difficult and then if you hire someone they would help to make it better yeah i mean it a mood board helps you to convey the kind of mood or the kind of personality, uh, the feelings that your brand like want to give off. Mm. So yes, all these come together uh, quite synergistically, you know, whether the font, the color and the visuals. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. So you um, talked about the power of brand promises. So uh, is there any company you perceive to have very good or impactful branding and what can we learn from them? I guess uh, I'd mentioned Nike before, right? It's one of my, my favorite brands. Uh, Nike has come a long way and through their history, I feel like they have really nailed their branding really on point. Yeah, because it's, it's, uh, it's not just a sneaker company, it's a sneaker company that has turned lifestyle and they're very, very strong. They have already done their homework uh, about who the audience are, whether they, they are the teenagers, they're the sportsmen, or the fashion, fashionista, the fashion people. They already segmented. Um, they, they have, um, uh, these are very important sort of information that they have researched and gathered before they be able to build a brand like Nike, where they are able to push out like really strong um, messaging, whether it's a pair of shoe that works for like um, a basketball bag yet, like the sneaker heads will want to have it. Um, but maybe it's also um, the kind of um, ad campaigns that they're able to put out and attract the people. And uh, they are always um, ahead of times, I guess. You know, they are always trendy. I mean, trendy, but not, uh, I guess, passe. They're always with times. So I think for, for such a brand, I feel like Nike has really nailed it. And then the other uh, the other brand that I think has definitely nailed it, I think everyone would have um, agree, is um, Apple. Mm -hmm. Apple has kept itself very clean and um, organized and very clear from the start uh, what who they are, you know. So everything they do is the user friendliness of their website, of their product, um, of the way that they we can perceive that the product is. Uh, of high value, of high quality, of high design, um, that is just very, uh, very sort of easy to get it from their branding. It's very simple, but it's just point on point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, they have not strayed <clears throat> a bit from day one to where they are today. They have kept on consistently hitting the points of who they are and what they do, you know, whether it's high design, high technology, high quality, high price, of course, and um, highly um, user friendly. I mean, once you have used the iPhone, you never want to use an Android, right? I'm, I'm sorry if I'm offended <laughs> anyone, but uh, that's for quite a, uh, quite a bit of people who have, uh, have said that. So, yeah, so I feel like these, these are the two brands that I, I really sort of think they have done amazing um, branding on that part. Yeah, can you elaborate a little bit more about what you mean by high design? High design? Yeah. Um, I guess for Apple, they, um, it's not about producing a tech, a tech uh, gadget. Uh, tech gadget is, uh, most of the tech gadgets are just uh, has a huge emphasis on the functionality, like, oh, it could do this, it could do that. And they forget about, perhaps the usability of the, the, say the phone, you know, like sometimes it's just difficult to find things, but Apple makes it different. You know, they came out with the fingerprint recognition thing. They, they were the first one who made the interface and the icons. Mm. Um, so that's 
and they they made such that um, they made it such that um, the finger gesture is really intuitive for humans. These are designs that we don't think about, but it is a design. Someone actually designed this. Um, and they, they really focus on this uh, as opposed to most other brands who afterwards copy them, of course. But, the, you know, it, it, just to take, take an Apple computer as an example, I mean, I used to be a PC user when I was a teen, uh, teenager. But once I switched to Apple, things really, I never looked back. But it's just because Apple computer is such a breeze to use, you know, the icons are there, you click it open. It is just... It's just intuitive, but I remember that my PC days, I have to do like, I can't remember, I have to do some command. It's a black screen with, with dot, 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 and then you have to do some, I can't remember, but it's just difficult. It's just not friendly. It feels like a piece of machine. But for an Apple computer, I don't feel like it's a machine. I feel like it's my friend. It's something that I want to use. I, I love to use. So I think having that um, emphasis on, on design, um, it's important because it brings, uh, it connected uh, the humans and the machine closer. That's in terms of Apple. And you don't, you, you feel like it's, um, once it's easy to use, you'll never you look back. And that actually also brings up the value of, of the product, which mm -hmm. is why Apple is such a sought after brand right now. It's the most valuable brand on earth right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah I, yeah, I think that's design. That's also design that's, um, I guess not people, not many people think about. Mm -mm. Yeah. And to step back a little bit, you mentioned about mood board just now. So um, what inspirations uh, do you use to put things on mood board or what do you normally put on mood board? It depends. Uh, sometimes it's just um, like a, a, a feeling. It could be an interior, like it could be a chair to inspire you. Mm -hmm. I really like the shape of the chair all the materials, all the colors, and can put it on. And that could inspire like the type associated type of uh, feelings or brand association of perhaps a chair. Yeah, or the kind of, um, I don't know, a person in a certain kind of dressing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested in fashion, obviously, that could be something that I could put on my mood board as well. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, this brand, uh, would attract this person who will be wearing this this clothing yeah that could be too yeah so like everyday life um inspirations going yes through. everyday oh. life yeah great so uh one of the very key, key questions for everyone so what are the challenges that most business owners face when expressing brand value and what really blocked them from doing it themselves yes um i <laughs> this is a very real question, um, <clears throat> real issue. Sometimes when I talk to clients or prospect clients, um, I ask them about <clears throat> who they are and what they are. They will give me like um, an essay of who they are. <laughs> um, to be a successful brand, you shouldn't be everything or you should not be targeting everyone. <clears throat> so you, shouldn't be, you shouldn't be everything. That's what I'm trying to say. So you must be very clear in your mind about who you really want to target. For example, let's, let's take Apple again as an example. Mm -hmm. Apple doesn't, they don't really care about people who don't appreciate design at a, in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. So they keep on pushing their design agenda. Um, they are about, they don't drop their price. They don't get discount. Mm -hmm. So that's a brand value that's very, very clear. They're very confident about their product because it's um, great in design, great in quality, and uh, you pay premium for it. So these are the, like almost three different kind of brand values that they are really confident to deliver. So mm -hmm. as for someone who is uh, running a business or has a business or starting a business, uh, you almost need to be very clear um, about who you want to target, how you want to target and what kind of products you are targeting. You cannot satisfy, you cannot satisfy everyone from five years old to 70 years old. There's no way, you know? Uh, you have to be very specific. Yeah, mm. yeah, you are, yeah. Yeah, how about for, for you yourself, like what is the most challenging uh, branding project you have uh, ever done? Challenging. Challenging branding project. 
I think challenging branding project is usually the ones um, that I would do for a bigger organizations where they have a bit more complexities in the hierarchy and decision making um, chains. Uh, I think those are challenging. <laughs> I prefer to talk with the business owner directly because uh, it's clearer and more succinct. Yeah, I know second guessing. So I think, um, yeah, most of our branding projects are pretty okay, except I would say the most challenging ones are with the bigger organizations, the more complex ones, yeah. Right. And so under the COVID situation, how have you approached branding and uh, client interaction differently? Yeah, for sure. So um, because um, traditionally, I mean, we, we always work with uh, international clients and we would fly out or fly us out to the city and we'll have face-to-face -face, um, um, sessions, workshops, and, you know, what have you, presentations, interactions, meetings. Uh, but because of the situation, everything now, it's uh, either through Zoom, Google Meet, or Skype. So it's just, um, it's just less of an intimacy and it's just um, a little bit uh, less easy to gauge what they are thinking or how they are feeling. Because if you are face to face, you can right away tell if they like something or what their response is and you can quickly address it. But because it's right now such a... Um, distance uh, on a screen uh, sometimes it also takes a bit of a time for them to respond so uh, I feel like that's the current challenge right now mm -mm. yeah but there's also an interesting shift towards um, more digital um, projects uh, I mean because of the pandemic everyone sort of um, I mean especially in my country where it's not so digitally like not all businesses are digitally uh, present they started to realize the importance of um, being digit digitally um, present. So there is, a, a I guess, request for, for more of these uh, digital uh, projects, but whether setting them out on social media website or you know, making more engagement through, um, through the internet. So these are things that they now think about. Uh, and I guess for those who are already um, present on the internet, uh, even more, um, uh, concern about getting more of the engagements through the internet. So that's one, uh, yeah. Yeah, do you have any brands in mind that you think have done a very good presence uh, digitally? Mm, I think a lot of uh, products have now gone from um, D2C direct to consumers and they are really sort of ditching the retail model. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but yeah, retail might be dying, but so uh, there are a lot of brands that I can't really, uh, can't, I don't really have anything on my, but a lot of, even my, uh, one of my, um, the, there's this brand in, in Singapore called Beyond the Vines. Uh, one of my friends run it. Um, they are very active doing live stream um, and to sell their products. So every Friday you get a live stream uh, uh, session and this is how they do their sales and thing that's been very successful and they're very, um, they have high engagement on the social media and um, I mean, they do have physical stores, but I see that they are very, very active and they have done very well since their rebrand um, through, through the uh, internet and I mean, through the social media digitally. So I think this is a really one example that has caught my attention. Yeah, yeah. I think for um, for other brands like um, Apple um, or Nike, they are still consistently doing it. Uh, but like Nike are uh, delivering like their commercials on IG stories. I think that's clever. Uh, if you follow them, um, you be able to see some of the uh, amazing, uh, you know, IG stories, which are actually uh, commercials done and uh, I, I really I really hands down to them for their creativity and their brand uh, strategy um, and, and also a lot of the museums because of the pandemic um, I can't remember which I think there's one in Holland and then the Riggs, Riggs Museum maybe um, they did a wonderful also IG story uh, on some of the artworks and mm -hmm. these are clever, cleverly done uh, as well as well as well as some kind of virtual tour, but done in a very sort of tasteful and design manner uh, that brings and draw us in. 
Uh, so these are the few examples that I can think of that has actually tried, I mean, done well in terms of um, uh, getting over the uh, whole uh, pandemic uh, situation. Yeah. Right, right. And I really love the background that you have um, today. So are you in your studio? Can you show us around a little bit and what are little tools uh, behind you? Yeah, so uh, I am at my studio actually in the kitchen area. You want me to bring swing this around? Yes, that would be awesome. Sure. Um, so this is um, have to up. this is our little workstation uh, work workshop because we do a hand mockups and we do um, you know just to show you some trash. We do like um, some mockups like. Uh, whether packaging or something, we do our mockups to show our clients. So it's not just, not everything leaves on the screen. You have to touch it. You have to feel it so that you know exactly if the box uh, fits well mm. in the hands of the client or if it's well with the product. Mm. Yeah, so we do that. Um, this is our kitchen. Wow. Yeah, we do have a good kitchen because we love to cook. And um, just to share, so I was sitting there, sitting there. So a wall of, um, we sit here and we could hang out, but we can also like sort of uh, brainstorm our ideas. So it's kind of like an open space where people can sit here and work as well, not just eating. Um, and then uh, just quickly bring it around. So this is, this is our meeting room. Oh, such a huge space. Uh, yeah, someone's in a meeting <laughs> house, and then this yeah. is um, this is where sort of our inspiration shelf of wow. materials or things we collect stuff. We still we still menus from restaurants, anyways. Um, and then this is the workspace. Uh, yeah. I just I just love how you have a lot of uh, space for cooking and and resting, which is I think is very crucial when it comes to having inspirations for designs and and uh, branding. Yeah. So um, yeah. So it's something like that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Quick tour, and someone's having a meeting in this. Other room. <laughs> Let me see. I don't know. <laughs> um, this is oh, what we call a situation room. It's uh, where all the confidential mm -hmm. projects and meetings <laughs> goes. And um, mm -hmm. yeah. Have a hand raise and remember, everyone, do not be shy and ask yelling questions. And uh, we have a very first question uh, from uh, from one of our from one of our audience. So Liana, can you ask your, uh, do you want to ask? The Hi, Eileen. Hello. Yeah, I have a question about, um, you know, when you work with projects, uh, there are like, when you're consulting with companies, I'm sure, let's say they're creating a new product um, and they have a target consumer in mind, but unfortunately they also have their own requirements because maybe for business objectives or profit reasons. So how do you balance, how do you make it, uh, this is question in decision-making ultimately and like how do you decide which value or which aesthetic to go with? So how do you normally break the, you know, sort of the, the, the divide or the decision in a sure? <laughs> right, um, okay. okay. You want me to answer it? Yeah, sure. Um, that's a great question, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, like I said before, design is very, very subjective. And uh, most of the time for us, we want to steer away from the owner having too much emotion with the design. Because bear in mind that whatever they are producing or making is really for their audience, really not for themselves. So I think for us, we have always uh, set up uh, we are, from the get go, there's always sessions that we um, would tell the client about this um, and we will remind them. And there will be, always be uh, parameters that we've set to contain um, these uh, knowledge. 
um, such that they are always reminded that, uh, you know, these are made for, the branding is made for the target audience and not for them or their mother or their sister, period. Um, it could be tricky because yes, it's human and they are very likely to say things like, oh, I don't like red, why do you use red? Um, I think these are not very uh, productive. For me, it's not very productive um, comments um, because uh, from the get-go, we would always establish a couple of brand values, you know, like what we just went through just now, we said something about being say uh, premium, being exclusive, and maybe being um, what's the same about maybe these are the three things that we look for that brand. And so we must always keep in mind about these three values that we are creating for this brand. And these three words have to be something that uh, these three, three or four brand values needs to be something that is in a, a agreement with uh, the client and they have to sort of be on board with these brand values that you have established for them. And then from there, you are able to sort of contain them and be very logical in saying why, you know, so they, they, there shouldn't be any more comments such as red is not my favorite color and, you know, you shouldn't be using it. It should, there shouldn't be any comments of that sort coming from them anymore. So I think it's how you set them out and how you educate them and how you sort of um, navigate your, your way through such, um, such what call that uh, complexities in, 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 in delivering the, the brand. I don't sure. know if that answers your question. Yeah, it does, it does. I mean, ultimately, I think we have to do a lot more research on the target audience and mm -hmm. to find the proof of why we should stick to the brand values. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, they have to be on board with it first. They have to feel like, you have to make them feel like they are part of that process. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have, you have to have that buy-in, then it's easier so yeah. that they don't, yeah. Because it's, it's really not productive to say, I hate this font, this red color is not my favorite color, blah, blah, blah. It's just not productive. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Thank you. So, Liana, can you introduce yourself a little bit or what makes you become interested in design and uh, join uh, Yellen's talk today? Sure, actually, um, my, my, currently I'm actually, uh, um, a product owner. I mostly do mm -hmm. B2B products, software mm -hmm. products, but uh, I'm interested in Yaling because I think uh, about 10 years ago, I was working for a friend's uh, topography lab branding studio with Mark Dewey and Sarah Chang. So I don't know if you know them. Yeah. Had sure. so I, think, I think you were there. So I kind of find myself having to go back to my early roots in design <laughs> to really be deep into you know how, how do we translate that into the software interface <laughs> mm -hmm. so and we're working with a, a large corporation it's just it's really difficult when you have many stakeholders mm -hmm. and also where we're coming from as, as a sorry about the song I think we, we're doing a bit of a bit of uh, you know plumbing <laughs> so yeah so that, that's kind of my background um, I think it's always hard to make a decision and, and, and we may fall into that fallacy where we're just trying to look for proof just to just so we go with that decision or someone's decision, right? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually I, I'm curious as well as Yang. So what made you decide to go into this design industry in the very first place? I think it's, uh something that it's uh has interest me since since i was young so mm -hmm. yeah i think i was uh always uh as drawn aesthetically to things that are aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing and uh, i have some sort of ocd mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um so yeah i think it's 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 an inborn thing i don't know <laughs> Yeah, and I'm interested in in uh, making things better for people, um, mm -hmm. aesthetically and functionally, of course. So I think that's probably uh, yeah a huge reason why I'm in, in this industry. I see mm -hmm. excitement. I see. I see. I feel excited when I can make over something. You know, mm -hmm. make it better. Make it work better. Make it look better. Yeah. Awesome. I really love the passion that you have too. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? So um, today, so uh, thank you everyone for joining the session and we're very grateful to have our online FEW community meeting again Lang today. And so if any questions or would love to connect with the speaker again, feel free to reach out to the FEW team and we'll make the arrangement. And uh, this session today is brought to you by uh, FEW. So don't forget to explore our web app where you can market your business online, grab a coffee with the CEOs, experts, investors, and get essential resources like today's session uh, needed to succeed in businesses. So thank you so much and have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you.